greetings to you. We have been discussing about the ion selective electrodes. Actually, ion selective electrodes is nothing but an extension of uh, glass electrode and pH meters. So, the indicator electrode of a cell is on an electrode in which the potential depends upon the activity of the particular uh, ionic species which is to be quantified. In potentiometry, normally a simple uh, carefully cleaned metal rod or wire of the metal etcetera constitutes the electrode which is dipped into solution all, all those we have covered electrodes of the first kind, electrodes of the second kind etcetera etcetera. And then we have discussed about the pH meters, pH measurements and activity and all those things we have covered earlier. So, here a glass electrode is a contains a gas uh, membrane which is uh, permeable to hydrogen ions. So, a, an ion selective electrode would be having a membrane which is permeable to the particular ion in which we are interested in the determination. So, in most of the um, glass electrode membranes, I have already told you that pH there will be a pH error of about uh, uh, 1 unit when you are measuring the pH up around 12 or alkaline range. Soda lime glass and uh, uh, any other glass containing lithium, lead, lead cadmium, etcetera. Most of them would be if you prepare the thin membrane, they would be responsive to those ions like uh, sodium, potassium, lithium, cad lead, cadmium, etcetera. If you make an electrode out of a semi permeable membrane made of the glass containing those elements. So, uh, we have described one uh, such uh, system earlier containing AG, AGCL uh, that is dipped in HCL and glass uh, membrane a test solution followed by potassium chloride uh, salt, salt bridge and Hg 2 Cl 2 mercury as the calomel electrode. So, such uh, EMF such uh, cells the EMF is maintained by a very simple relationship which is equivalent to Nernst equation that is uh, E is equal to E naught plus R t by n f ln log log ln oxidant divided by reductant. When we say oxidant divided by reductant, we mean concentrations. Actually concentrations are not, we do not mean, we write the activity, activity of the oxidant and activity of the reductant. In this case, we do not write E naught also. Instead of that, we replace it with a another constant k that is known as asymmetry constant. So, the asymmetry constant will be different for different uh, ions. It may be different for sodium, potassium, calcium, lead all those things are possible. So, the glass electrode can be used uh, for uh, alkali metals very regularly it has been used even before the advent of other redox uh, reagents, other uh, ion selective electrodes. So, I had uh, given you a definition called as p m just like p h we can refer to p m negative log of metal ion concentration. And, uh, then I had uh, described to you couple of uh, uh, electrodes. One of them was iodide that is silver silver iodide in contact with HI followed by a membrane and then KCl, HgCl2 and mercury as the reference electrode. So, that would be responsible for responsive to silver or iodide any one of them. And then we had uh, described lanthanum fluoride electrode and uh, lanthanum fluoride is basically a, an insoluble material which is sealed to the bottom of a plastic container but containing potassium chloride 
etcetera and I had also described to you the uh, electrode uh, how the electrode is to be made because uh, the fluoride ions need to move from the solution into the uh, to the electrode surface membrane and then into the inner solution. So, the mechanism of uh, fluoride ion trans, uh, transport is nothing but the movement of the fluoride ions from one lattice defect to another lattice defect. So, the movement through the membrane would be through vacant spots from lattice through the lattice defects. So, this led to a beautiful uh, fluoride meter which is available in the market today. It costs about 1 to 1.5 lakhs or something like that, but it can be carried anywhere we want and I had explained to you the significance of fluoride in the environment. What I had uh, conveyed is that fluoride is a very dangerous element. A lot of people in Karnataka, Andhra, Maharashtra and uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, all these uh, states people are suffering from high fluoride content and uh, you can see that their teeth become yellow and then legs become hands become like this, they cannot walk, they cannot uh, lift things, pick up etcetera. This kind of problems are there most of the time when, uh, for people who are exposed to high levels of fluoride. And what is a high level of fluoride? The high level of fluoride is more than 1.5 ppm. If it is more than that, you continuously keep on drinking that water, you will have teeth problem, you will have hands problem, you will have uh, folded hands and bent legs, all kinds of problems keep on happening. That is why fluoride determination has become a must in all underground uh, water source resources. Whenever we dig bore well, we need to check fluoride and fluoride meter is a very convenient way of checking fluoride content and it can be given to any school, any village, any community wherever there is total dependency on the bore well. So, I had also told you that fluoride ion should be less than 1.5 ppm. In India, I have come across uh, up to 3 ppm that is very high, almost 100 percent, no, double. So, this uh, slide lanthanum fluoride, I wanted you to see what basically what we are, what we are see, what you are seeing in this slide is uh, this that uh, LIF3 lanthanum fluoride is sealed into the bottom of a container and that you can carry as an electrode dipped in a solution. So, when the electrode is placed in a solution of fluoride ions, equilibrium gets established and the, at the external surface of the crystal and the fluoride ion activity that internal and external surface are different leading to the potential difference which is proportional to the fluoride ion activity of the test solution that is sample, whatever you want to test it with. Now, I want to uh, I actually I do not want to go into details of uh, such uh, uh, ion selective electrodes I, because it is very difficult to go into construction of uh, such uh, um, electrode membranes etcetera. But I will give you an overview of what kind of electrodes are available in the market for our uh, uh, for different ions. So, if uh, you can even have a big library of metal ion uh, electrodes in a carry bag uh, in a briefcase and uh, you have the capability of determining several metal ions if you have different metal ion electrodes uh, that is ion selective electrodes. So, now I am describing you a silver electrode. What is a silver electrode? It is nothing but a small pressed disc of about uh, 1 about 5 mm dia. 
So, the silver electrode is nothing but a g to a small 0.5 mm uh, dia of this size. This is a disc made of lanthanum fluoride. This disc you can seal it into an electrode and on this electrode on this disc you can put a silver silver chloride wire silver wire and then take the connection. This is just like a glass electrode. So, a press disc or a pellet of A g 2 s silver sulphide you can seal it into the base of a plastic container and then contact is made by fitting an electric uh, wire silver wire embedded in the pellet. So, there is lot of chemistry involved in the preparation of A g 2 s itself and uh, you also need some sort of a binder to make the A g 2 s silver sulphide as a spaced and uh, that solution should evaporate and make a compact disc which can be hand which can be mechanically stable and then you insert it dry it and lot of chemistry work is involved, but it is mostly uh, easily done or guessed. There are lot of literature how to prepare a silver uh, sulphide uh, um, disc and many other discs also. For example, for cadmium we can do cadmium sulphide uh, disc like that many other uh, ions. Now, this electrode uh, silver silver sulphide can be used for silver or sulphide both. It is an electrode of the second kind that is a metal in contact with a solution metal wire or metal oxide in contact with a solution is electrode of the second kind. So, if we use co copper sulphate here I have written copper sulphate now. I can use copper sulphate, I can use cadmium sulphate, I can use lead sulphate, sulphide all these are sulphides. Apart from sulphide respective metal ions also can be analyzed that is a very uh, simple common sense because when the ions are in equilibrium the concentrations of the anion and cation also would be in equilibrium. So, the ionic concentration would be stoichiometrically equivalent to either cation or anion. So, then now I am describing to you ion exchange electrode. What is an ion exchange electrode? It uh, sounds uh, confusing a little bit, but it can be prepared by using an organic liquid ion exchanger immiscible with water. So, it is basically some sort of a membrane ion sensing material soluble in an organic solvent is placed in a tube sealed at the lower end of a hydrophobic membrane that is we can use cellulose acetate a very simple cellulose acetate is available in the market you can buy it mix it with water and spread it as a thin sheet dry it there you have the cellulose acetate membrane on that you put the ion exchange uh, the material uh, ion exchange uh, resin uh, organic liquid ion exchange uh, material you can sprinkle on that or you can dip it into that. So, the organic ion exchange um, ion exchanger will be coated on the membrane. So, the membrane should be hydrophobic is not it that is very important because hydrophobic membranes do not get affected by aqueous solutions water. So, they remain intact unreacted with water. So, they can be used again and again. So, what is the construction? The construction is very simple. I have a uh, membrane here pH sensitive and then I have a reference electrode and one internal and one external and 
the there is a solution here and uh, there is a porous wick to put um, uh, the sample solutions etcetera just like construction of a glass electrode. And then uh, we can keep on working uh, put the uh, take this electrode and dip it in a solution which we want to determine. Uh, then uh, our the other parts that is external parts would be uh, voltmeter, galvanometer and then ammeter and all those things plus battery power supply. So, this contains 0.1 molar HCl also we have silver silver chloride reference electrode. So, totally almost solid ion exchange electrode with the help of ion exchanger material that is some sort of a resin which is dissolved in the solvent and coated onto the silver cellulose acetate membrane. So, solid ion exchange membrane can be prepared by dissolving liquid ion exchange material with PVC. We can use PVC in a suitable organic solvent that is tetrahydrofuran and subsequent evaporation of the solvent we should do and then the disc the membrane can be cut into small small discs and we have so many electrode membranes available and we can use them for the ion exchange resin. So, I can have a calcium ex electrode it can be made by calcium dialkyl phenyl phosphate or simply dialkyl phosphate also we can use uh, or dialkyl phenyl phosphate. So, this is the liquid ion exchanger uh, material. So, but the electrode fails in solution because the reaction is reversed. Sometimes such electrodes we do not want uh, some uh, if the concentration is very less then from the ion exchanger electrons can move uh, the calcium ions can move out into the solution. So, that danger is always there. So, one has to be a little careful whenever we use liquid uh, ion exchange uh, electrodes. Then I am describing you a nitride electrode. In the nitride electrode what we have is a hexadecyl tridodecyl ammonium nitrate in the membrane. So, this nitrate what is hexadecyl? I think you should brush up your uh, organic chemistry it is nothing but a hydrocarbon chain containing 10 carbon atoms CH 3, CH 2, CH 2 etcetera. So, hexadecyl tridodecyl 3 dodecyl groups and then uh, one hexadecyl group connected to a carbon atom and uh, the 3 dodecyl groups uh, are ending with ammonium nitrate in the as a it is a so it's cationic surfactant. Okay. So, it is a cationic uh, mat ion exchange material and uh, nitrate is the one which is getting exchanged here that is the uh, ion that is determined using this material. Hexa Desyl tridodesyl ammonium nitrate is available in the market in the laboratory you can buy that and then dissolve it. So, perchlorate ion if you want to prepare that is still simpler because we can use tris orthophenanthrolene iron to perchlorate. So, what we do here is uh, take some ferrous ion react it with orthophenanthrolene that is available in the laboratory any organic laboratory inorganic laboratory will have this orthophenanthrolene it will give a dark red precipitate with iron and then in uh, add a little bit of perchloric acid uh, um, and then uh, the iron perchlorate trace orthophenanthrolene iron perchlorate is the precip is precipitated. So, we can also prepare neutral organic ligands and uh, 
uh, they can be replaced by other neutral organic ligands also, which we need not necessarily use tris orthophenanthrolene salt alone. We can use any other neutral organic ligands or those ligands also can be replaced by other uh, neural, uh, neutral organic ligands. So, for example, this potassium ion selective electrode next one here I am showing you with the mouse potassium ion selective electrode is prepared by using valinomycin it is something uh, equivalent to orthophenanthrolene but it is an antibiotic. So, that contains oxygen atoms that can form a ring compound with potassium ions by displacing its hydration cell. So, such materials also can be used for preparing an ion selective electrode. A whole series of electrodes have been developed for analyzing solutions of gases. Now, we are moving from the ions in solution to the determination of gases in solution. Gases not necessarily in solution, but in the atmosphere also. So, what are the things that we can uh, estimate using ion selective electrodes? We can use uh, uh, ammonia, ammonia can dissolve in water uh, giving you an ammoniacal solution and then carbon dioxide also can dissolve in water or most of the soda what we drink contains uh, carbon dioxide and then nitrogen dioxide yes we can determine that is a pollutant in the urban atmosphere nitrogen dioxide gas is there and then sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide all these are gases. For hydrogen sulfide determination I can use a hydrogen ion responsive electrode and for nitrogen dioxide I can use a nitrate ion responsive electrode. Why do we uh, use sulfide ion responsive electrode for hydrogen sulfide? Because stoichiometrically we can convert any sulfide ion in the air or in a solution to the uh, hydrogen sulfide that is what we mean. So, for nitrogen and dioxide I need to use a nitrate ion because nitrogen dioxide if it is in solution it will be in equilibrium with nitrate ion. The other gases are analyzed using a simple glass electrode to determine the proportion of any of these gases in a stream of gas. The gaseous mixture is passed through a scrubber there is there has to be some sort of wetness uh, aqueous uh, interface that is why we have to pass them through a scrubber where the gas is dissolved in water and the resultant liquid must be in equilibrium with the solution uh, with the way how is the solution where the solution is coming when the gas is scrubbed with water there will be enough water vapor and there will be some amount of solution in the gaseous mixture that is coming out. So, a scrubber is a must if you want to determine gases in a using gases using a an ion selective electrode. So, the gas is dissolved in water when you pass it through the scrubber and the resultant liquid is examined with appropriate gas sensing electrode. So, dissolved oxygen again here I want to tell you something more about dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is a great uh, uh, boon for all of us. We all uh, are capable of eating fish because fish survive on the dissolved oxygen and we need dissolved oxygen for several other biotic species including microbes, planktons and then a small animals, big animals for every one is dependent upon the dissolved oxygen in water. In fact, the solubility of water uh, solubility of oxygen in water is approximately 6 to 7 uh, milligrams per liter 
not much, but that is enough for many of the uh, for thousands of aquatic uh, uh, flora and fauna to survive. So, dissolved oxygen is a very important concept uh, and we do not want our uh, rivers and ponds devoid of oxygen, dissolved oxygen. Usually, oxygen is dissolved from the air water interface into the water and uh, if we pollute our rivers and ponds etcetera, there will not be, there will be chemicals in the water that needs, they will consume the oxygen dissolved in water for their oxidation. So, once uh, the oxygen is consumed by the dissolved chemicals, water becomes poorer in the dissolved oxygen content and the flora of uh, planktons, this, that and so many other viruses, uh, aerobic viruses, they all die. So, the water body will move towards anaerobic system. So, once the anaerobic system sets in, algae will die and uh, other things will die and there will be loading, further additional loading. That is how ponds and lakes will die. That is known, the process is known as eutrophication. And uh, we also need uh, good oxygen for uh, drinking, uh, taking bath etcetera. We cannot use anaerobic system uh, water for our routine regular uses. So, dissolved oxygen is a very important aspect and it is very conveniently determined by the uh, by dissolved oxygen membranes. Nowadays, uh, even in uh, India, we have a lot of uh, people who will supply you DO meter, dissolved oxygen meter that can be carried away in a in your pocket using a pen or there are meters uh, which are like pH meter which can be used for uh, in the laboratory. So, all you have to do is replace the electrode, glass electrode with a DO meter. So, uh, dissolved oxygen electrode and that electrode contains a membrane which is responsive to oxygen in solution as well as outside. So, these dissolved oxygen membranes are made by PVC covering an electrolyte and two metallic electrodes. So, oxygen diffuses through the membrane, gets reduced at the electrode and uh, how much uh, does it get reduced? It depends on the partial pressure. So, greater the partial pressure of oxygen, that means, if there is more oxygen in the sample, greater is the diffusion through the membrane at any fixed time and uh, produce it produces, then it will produce a current proportional to the oxygen concentration in the solution. Operation is very simple, there is nothing very complicated, all it all you need is two electrodes in between and a, and a membrane in between, two electrodes, one on the top, one on the bottom and a membrane which is responsive to dissolved oxygen, the whole thing is dipped. Higher the oxygen content, more is the current produced, very simple arrangement. The membrane thickness determines the response time of the electrode, that is also important and there can be depletion of oxygen around the electrode during the measurement if the sample is not stirred. So, it is very important while determination of the dissolved oxygen that the solution should be stirred nicely, otherwise there will be wrong uh, readings. See, it is a question of few milligrams per liter. If you do not stir, 1 or 2 milligrams will be less. So, 1 milligram less out of 6 ppm is almost like uh, 18 percent error. That is not acceptable in milligram per liter concentration, no. So, uh, the small little things 
in the laboratory can be can lead to great errors. For example, if somebody puts this error off during measurement, there will be 18 percent error minimum plus or minus 1 milligram. So, measurement of the dissolved oxygen is especially important in environmental studies, waste water treatment, brewing, you know making beer, wine etcetera all those places we need dissolved oxygen determination continuously all the time. So, the membrane thickness should be very proper and we must have different kinds of uh, stocks of me membranes, because if for some reason a membrane is not working properly, then we can change the membrane quickly and then determine the uh, dissolved oxygen using another smaller membrane. So, the remaining part of the electrode will remain same. So, uh, here is a list of uh, materials which interfere which are the detections sorry not interfere it is the detection limit of metal ions in solution using ion selective electrodes. So, I have here sodium N A plus how much I can determine 1 into 10 raise to minus 6 molar concentration these are all in molar concentration not in ppm. So, there is a difference is not it. This I have explained to you the concept of molar solutions, ppm solutions etcetera. Molar is not equivalent to ppm. So, the concentration of uh, normally ppm level concentrations are of the order of about 10 raise to minus 4 or minus 5 ppm. So, um, molar sodium can be determined in 1 is 1 into, 1 into 10 raise to minus 6 molar concentrations potassium is also almost same ammonia is still lower uh, 10 raise to minus 7 silver is again 1 into 10 raise to minus 7 silver sul silver sulfide electrode can be almost same and calcium uh, 5 into 10 raise to minus 7 molar uh, you can convert this into ppm uh, by simple calculations then calcium magnesium almost all of them cadmium copper cadmium is copper and uh, these two are 10 raise to minus 7 and 10 raise to minus 8 molar concentrations that is fantastic actually. And uh, the that is why we always say the ion selective electrodes are uh, very important if you want to determine very low concentrations of the solution in molar quantities and the response would be linear over several orders of magnitude. That is you will get a linear curve if you plot concentration versus uh, molarity uh, concentration versus uh, EMF. So, this is concentration this would be uh, EMF. So, if I get a linear concern this thing here it will be 1 into 10 raise to minus 7 and minus 6 and here it would be 10 raise to minus 4 like that you will get orders of magnitude concentration can be 10 times more than the uh, 10 times more than the spectrophotometric or atomic absorption systems because all of them will ap appear give you real, um, a linear curve only in the same ppm range maybe 1 to 5 ppm maybe 1 to 10 ppm but here it is 1 ppm, 100 p 10 ppm, 100 ppm, uh, 1000 ppm like that the order will be higher and the range of uh, determination would be larger. So, the freedom of concentration dependence on concentration is 
avoided in uh, ion selective electrodes or even potentiometer glass electrode etcetera because the linearity is of the order of in the multiples of 10. So, molarity that is what we are talking about. So, coming back to this slide uh, I am going to talk about fluoride ions now. Fluoride would be 10 raise to minus 6 molar uh, detection limit, chloride will be 10 raise to minus 5 molar, bromide would be 10 raise to minus 6 molar, iodine 10 raise to minus 8, then cyanide, chlorate, NO2, NO3, SCN, thiocyanate all these things are uh, with the order of about 10 raise to minus 6 molar. See the uh, beauty is uh, we do not know we do not know what are the problems with uh, the determination of ppm level or uh, we do not know the solutions for chemical analysis of anions at very low concentrations if it is chloride I can uh, in milligram quantities etcetera I can do a gravimetry and then I can say a precipitate silver chloride calculate chloride concentration. If it is sulphate I will say determine it as barium sulphate and you can determine concentration of sulphate in milligram quantities. But if it is in microgram we have a problem. So, microgram that will not be in molar but in ppm. But if it is in my, uh, uh, 10 raise to minus 6 molar, we do not have any other method that can be used for the determination of such anions at such low concentrations. That is the beauty. See determination of uh, anions and cations at very low concentrations is a very important task. Quite often whenever we need NLR grade reagents or super pure compounds ultra pure compounds. We need to determine all the elements cations, anions and um, the other materials in 10 raise to minus 5, 10 raise to minus 6 molar solutions only. Especially if you want to determine sulphate uh, this uh, silicon, we need purity of 10 raise to minus 6 or minus 9. That means, one atom or one, one part in 10 raise to 9 parts allowed. Higher than that the whole material becomes useless, it cannot be used for solar panels. So, that is why the production of high purity ultra purity materials requires the analysis of parts per million or 10 raise to minus 6, minus 7, minus 8 molar concentrations of these uh, um, ions. And we do not know any other method except ion selective electrodes which permit us to determine the, uh, the ionic concentrations in such low concentrations. We do not have any other method technical method for the determination that is why ion selective electrodes are very 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 important in uh, day to day life also and we will continue our discussion on the uh, solid state ion uh, electro ion selective electrodes in the next class thank you very much